Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and I'm really excited for this tutorial. We're gonna be having a look at the awesome Nose 3 plugin that you can find on FX Factory. Now, if you're looking to create procedural geometry, connected particles, or organic effects in Final Cut Pro 10 that you can animate in three-dimensional space, then this plugin will be definitely one to have a look at for you. Now we're gonna dive into the kind of nuts and bolts of how you work with some of the pre-built parameters um, in this plugin um, and how you kind of modify and change some of those built-in parameters. But there's tons and tons to explore here that we don't have time for in this tutorial. So hopefully this kind of gives you a, a little nugget of what you're gonna get when you dive in and work with the Nose 3 plugin in Final Cut Pro 10. Now if you like these kinds of tutorial reviews and plugin reviews for Final Cut Pro 10, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. But without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we work with the Nodes 3 plugin that you can find on FX Factory. So we're gonna dive into a couple of examples of how we work with the Nodes plugin here in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, once you have loaded up the Nodes plugin and downloaded it, uh, then you'll see that in the generators, there's just really tons and tons of different options um, for creating different types of animations uh, using the Nodes plugin. We're gonna have a look at a couple of those uh, different animations just to get a sense of how we control the different elements um, with the Nodes plugin. So what we're actually gonna do is have a look at these two examples Examples. And these are kind of recreations of some of the, the presets, but it will help you to see how you can look at those presets and copy the different settings or work with the different settings and adapt them uh, to what you need uh, when you're actually creating the nodes. So we've got this example uh, with kind of the rotating uh, text. And then also we're going to have a look at this example without any text, um, but just looking at different ways in which we can design with the nodes plugin um, with some of the kind of different parameters. So we're going to start with a completely blank canvas here and the nodes plugin that you'll see right up at the top basically uh, is a completely blank uh, setup so we're going to drag that down to our timeline and I'm going to stretch out the instance of this that we've dropped down onto the timeline so the first thing we're going to do um, is get some text into this and this is what you'll see these kind of ring of dots when you first load up the nodes plugin and it's really by working through and understanding uh, the different settings that you have for each of these parameters that you're going to be able to produce some effective work um, with this plugin so we've got our nodes plugin uh, selected and we're going to jump to some text here which i have prepared so basically i have a list of movies and we're going to use for our text here and i'm going to just select it all command and a and copy it and then we'll come back to final cut pro and we're going to turn on our lines and our text here up in the inspector okay so when we have our plugin selected on the timeline we'll see those options up on the top right and I'm just going to turn my scrubbing on so we can kind of see the animation when it begins to happen. So we're going to click edit text and basically I'm going to replace all this text. So command and A, delete and then command and V to paste in my list of horror movies uh, that I've got here and we'll click OK. So basically the first thing we want to do is align the text so it's kind of facing outwards uh, from our nodes plugin here and I'm just going to minimize my generators across on the left there and we're going to come to some of the parameters in the inspector so you would think that it was in the text settings that we'd come in to change some of those text settings but actually it's in the form settings that we change some of the ways in which things are looking at the camera um, with the node so we're going to come into form and we are going to change the orientation um, to fix which is basically going to give us this ring of text here um, and basically each piece of text is aligned to the individual nodes so i'm going to close that up we don't need to change anything else there for the moment and now we're going to come down to text and i just want to offset my text so it's not bumping right up against uh, the individual nodes so we're going to scroll down here and we're looking basically for the text offset which we can just stretch out here to pull that text away from our nodes so basically with this example um, we're going to connect uh, all of our nodes in the middle um, so we need to change that um, so we're going to change our connections uh, down here and we're going to change it from serial to free position which basically by default is going to be right in the middle um, of our nodes here but we can also adjust uh, kind of where that sits and in a sec we'll see we can adjust kind of where that sits in the z-axis as well as we modify things so I'm going to close this for the moment and we're just going to go into transform and I want to pivot this on the x-axis so that we can kind of get this little bit of angle um, in our 
node set up here so that we can see some of the 3D uh, Z-axis stuff that we're going to do um, to the lines here. So we'll go back from transform now that we've pivoted the X-axis and we will go into connections and basically this free position Z we can drop it down or we can lift it up. So we're going to lift this up to around about here and basically now our nodes are connecting in the middle there and obviously we can adjust the free position here as well. Now we have some options down here for our lines um, so we can change our lines from being straight lines um, into curved lines and that's going to give our lines this kind of nice curve and then we have some tangent offsets here as well and for this one we're going to modify the z-axis so that our lines kind of form this bell shape so it looks like we've got this nice little curve dropping down with our movie hanging off the end of the node at the bottom of that line. So basically we're kind of a part way to having our setup finished here. We're going to add some color to our lines. I'm just going to bring down the drop down menu here and we'll select a nice little orange for the top of our lines and I will select a magenta for the bottom of the lines here. And we can also color our nodes as well. So if I come to the node color, I can modify the color. So we'll select an orange to kind of complement uh, the orange and the purple that we have here. And now you can see we've basically uh, got our line set up as we want to. So the next thing that we're going to add here is an effect. And you'll notice a lot of cool effects as you begin to work with the nodes plugin in the effects panel, which kind of looks a little bit empty here. But we are going to use this auto highlight option, which basically is going to, if we just scrub through here, is going to go through each one of our pieces of text and it's going to highlight each of them. And what we're going to change here is the highlight position, so where the text actually jumps out um, to be highlighted. So I'm going to change the preview position here, which is going to show me where the text is going to end up. We'll turn this back off in a second. And I am going to lift this up out across to the left a little bit and then lift it up and then in the z-axis I'm going to pull this out so that we get this kind of nice big uh, piece of text kind of popping out. If we change this to camera as well um, we can actually increase this in the z-axis a bit more and we can position this out here. So you can see we get this nice curve flowing out from the position it was already in and now we need to add some animation so if we turn off the effects here or close up the effects we will come into animation and in the animation we're going to change this to transform around the z-axis so transform rotation will mean this will now rotate at a speed that we set around the z-axis and we'll now see this rotating and I have just forgotten to turn off under the effects here. Let's turn off the preview position, which is why it's not animating. So if we just come back to the beginning now, you'll see that it's going to basically cycle now through each of those bits of text um, that we set up. So you've got this real nice level of control with the different parameters um, in the nodes. And I'd really recommend going into some of the presets so you can see in different presets as you kind of have a look at them. Each of them will have uh, kind of different things set up in here and set up to animate. So if you have a look through these one at a time and kind of compare them to what you're looking to create, then you'll be able to kind of set things up and learn uh, from some of those presets in terms of what you need to do to create those different options. So if we come to the nodes option here again now, we're going to drop this down and we're going to kind of create this spiky ball effect uh, that we have here. So basically, using the nose to create uh, something quite different. So we don't have any text in here, we just have this kind of rotating 3D ball with spikes on the outside. So I'm gonna come ahead here to this empty version and we'll just stretch this out so it fills our playhead, so it fills our timeline here. And now with this selected, um, what we're gonna do is just run through the different settings um, that we're gonna be working with here. So we need the lines turned on here but we don't need the, the text turned on obviously and then we're going to run through and kind of have a look at how we set this up. So basically with this setup um, that we have here we're setting up one series of nodes in one of these spikes and then we are basically replicating it around a sphere. So we'll see how this works kind of when we run through 
uh, the setup here. So basically the first thing to do uh, is to turn on our connections and change them to free position. And I'm also going to just transform this along the X axis just so we can kind of see what's happening here. So we'll come back into free position here and we're going to push that uh, Z option up and then we're going to change the number of loop steps to nine and we'll set this at 196. So it's actually coming down there. And then we'll close up the connections. And then under the node settings here, we're gonna change this to fixed size point. We'll close that up. And then under form, we'll leave this at circle. I'm gonna drop my radius down and you can start to see we get that sort of spike which we had there. And I'm gonna increase my node count here. And then I'm gonna have an inner offset here as well. So basically uh, I've got two sets of nodes there together and I'll set my inner offset to somewhere around 15. Uh, I'm going to set my radius a little smaller and I'll leave my node count somewhere around 126 or something like that. Okay so now once I have this set up if I come down now to my effects I'm going to change this to replicate and we are going to get a couple of replicated nodes here or sets of nodes. I'm going to change this to replicate around a sphere. And basically, I want to change some of these options here for the sphere. So you can see I can pull this together. I'm going to change the number of copies to somewhere around 60. So this is around a sphere at the moment, but it looks a little weird. And I just need to change the orientation um, of those. And basically my rep orientation at the moment is looking, is fixed. I want to get them to look at the center and we are going to just drop this down a little bit. So once I have my rep radius set to around 60 something and 300, I want to come down and set my rep X rotation uh, to 90. So I can just bring this up to 90. And you can see now we're starting to get close uh, to this sphere that we're looking for. So basically now we have a sphere and we can modify the inner offset. We'll leave that as is. And if I minimize this, I can come back to transform and I'm going to change my rotation to zero. We don't really need the rotation there. And I can now move my camera away from my sphere and you can start to see those spikes um, animating out there. So now I'm going to come to my animation panel here. I'm going to animate my effects replicate rotation on the Z axis and we'll increase that a little bit. So now we'll start to see a little bit of rotation of these spikes. And I'm going to transform the rotation around the Z axis. We'll increase the speed there and you'll start to see we're getting a simple rotation there. And then if I add some rotation on the Y axis as well and increase that, we'll start to get this rotation of the sphere. So you can see here now we've got that kind of sphere animating and then we can come in and modify some of the things we initially set up. So we can modify the Z position so we can make smaller spikes or bigger spikes depending on what we're looking for. Uh, we can change the number of loop steps so we can have more loops or less loops and then we can also come in and work on our form so the basic uh, shape of what we have. So we can change Again, the number of nodes, if we want, we can change the inner offset so we can have this kind of tighter uh, or wider and we can kind of modify those different things. We can also come in and if we come to our rendering, and this is kind of where you can do some interesting stuff with the depth, we can turn on things like the luminosity and opacity uh, for the depth and we can change kind of where the depth actually falls. So how much kind of fall off we have 
um, in the depth. We can change the size of our nodes as well. So we can drop this down so it becomes more of uh, a line around those points. And then we can also do things like changing the node color as well. So if we change to a blue and we come to our lines, we can also change our line color here as well. And we can also, if we come to our background here, turn on our background and actually uh, have a background uh, to what we're viewing too. So if we play this through now, you can see by kind of modifying those different node settings using the replicator, which is really useful for kind of creating these replicated uh, effects. Um, we have a lot of nice control over the way that we can create node effects in, in the Nodes 3 plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. So there's loads more uh, to kind of cover in here. Um, there's loads more experimentation you can do and some very cool uh, effects. Um, I'm not sure which one is my favorite quite yet, but if you have a scrub through of the different effects, you'll kind of start to see that there's literally hundreds of different options um, for creating some very cool and interesting effects with the Nodes 3 plugin. Now, if you grab one of these effects and drop it down to your timeline, then you can obviously work um, and modify any of the settings that we've run through um, from these pre-built effects, um, or you can actually have a look at how they're made. So look at some of the different options uh, in the nodes, how things are set up, and then also have a look at some of the things in the lines and the color and all that type of thing, and see how these nodes are set up uh, to create uh, some of these very cool effects. And I'd really recommend that um, as you start to work with it more and more um, so that you can kind of get a nice level of control over the nodes that you want to create in Final Cut Pro 10. So hopefully this has been a useful um, overview um, of the Nodes 3 plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. If you have any questions about this, then please do leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.